Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. On today's edition, we'll learn the steps to staying safely at home. Helping Seniors Executive Director Carrie Fink and Operations Director Nancy Deerdorf join Emerald Care Management's Karen Wernland at this recent Senior Resource Center of Brevard conversation. Let's talk living safely at home. So we can do this. We can stay safely at home. And so one of the persons that I want to uh, talk about today, Tracy Graff, is a registered nurse. She runs a company called Avid Home Care Services. She sent us a great presentation. So she starts with some senior stats that we need to be aware of. Over 50 million senior citizens live in the U.S., so it's 16 and a half percent of our population. This is an interesting statistic. 10,000 uh, seniors, uh, well, we gain 10,000 new seniors, 65 plus, every single day. And I remember a corollary statistic about that, that we talked about the fact that um, not only is 10,000 people a day turning 65, but it's like one every 7.8 seconds when you divide it out. I mean, that's how fast the senior population is growing. And if you're here in Florida, you know it grows <laughs> really fast because we're a state people want to move to. So where there's this huge influx of seniors, they're retiring up north, they say, I want to come down south, I like the sunshine, I like the beaches, I want to be uh, in good weather year-round. So we get this huge influx of people. So 5% of older adults age 65 live in a nursing home. Of those, 50% are 85 and older, 35% 75 to 84, and 15% are between 65 and 74. So that means, by definition, we prefer to age at home. So this is the things that Tracy had put on the list for us to talk about today. What are the big four? And she said fall prevention, medication management, safety and security, personal care needs. So let's, let's kind of dive into that. So fall prevention is the big challenge. So look at these numbers. Almost 3 million people over 65 hospitalized for fall-related injuries. For It's hip fractures, head injuries, things like that. And so... Um, the advice that Tracy is giving us here is that if we put assistive aids, grab bars, ramps, anything that high profile toilets, non-slip strips in your uh, tub or on your stairs, all that's going to uh, be helpful. She suggests putting a shower head for a handheld one, uh, maybe a shower chair so that you're not going to fall in the, uh, in the bathroom. Uh, we already kind of hit on this one. Remove the throw rugs, and if you need a cane or walker, please use it. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm too proud. I don't want to use a walker because it means I'm giving up. No, it's going to keep you safe and, and, and living, uh, living long. Make sure to get your eyes checked annually. Vision changes can precipitate a fall. I'll add some about falls. I have experience of that uh, with, in my, not only in my career but personally. Um, I myself was a caregiver as well, so I was on the caregiving side, and then I became a caregiver for multiple family members. So on falls, a couple of things I want to mention is a lot of times when we see falls in the home, it's during the night when us older folks are getting up to go to the restroom. Um, why is that? Well, uh, older folks, when, when we're younger, uh, our kidneys process uh, are, are, are more active during the day. Uh, so when we go to sleep, we typically as a younger person, sleep through the night. As we get older, our kidneys become more active at night. Not sure if you knew that. So we get the urge to go to the bathroom uh, in the middle of the night. So we wake up sometimes abruptly from sleep, and folks get up in the dark, and they either trip, can't see their way to the restroom, they're the bathroom, or there's a thing called orthostatic hypotension. Anybody ever hear of it? And we've probably all experienced it, young and old. Uh, if we get up abruptly from laying down or sitting in a chair and you ever go, ooh, wow, I got a head rush, and you got a little dizzy, that's orthostatic hypotension. And that's where our blood pressure makes an abrupt change and it drops, causing that feeling of woozy. So we, a lot of times folks will go from a, a just sleeping soundly to waking up to go to the bathroom and they get out of bed and they jump up and then they're on their way with or without an assistive device. 
and they fall on the way to the restroom. That's very, very common. So it's very important, uh, particularly as we get older, but for really everyone, that when you uh, awake to use the restroom in the middle of the night, that you sit on the side of the bed. Give your body 30 seconds or so to adjust, then stand up at the side of the bed with your bed behind you, okay, in case you need to sit back down, and give yourself another 30 seconds. Then make your way to the restroom. Lighting in a hallway or leading to the restroom is very important. Yes, a lot of us don't like lights on when we sleep, but at least have a light wherever your restroom is, illuminating where you need to go. And your eyes also need to take a, a moment to adjust from waking from uh, sleep to seeing that light. So give yourself a minute. I know you want to be in a rush. Some, some of us are in a rush when we need to go in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, and I'm just going to be frank. Uh, nobody wants an accident. Uh, if they got to go, they got to go. But rushing could lead to so much more. So it's very important you don't rush. Um, so those are, those are a couple things I see a lot with falls in the home. Um, the other thing is assistive devices. I, I really want to uh, point that out. There are those who refuse to use one because of dignity. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I, I mean, really, we've all been on the other side of the fence. If you don't use a cane or a walker, nobody looks at someone using a cane or a walker and thinks, oh, there's a person using a cane or a walker. So I know it's a dignity thing, but then there are those who use them, but the majority of the population do not use assistive devices correctly. There is a way to use a cane properly, and there is a way to use a walker properly. How many times have you been out and you saw somebody using a walker and they're carrying it? Or they're dragging it, right? They're scooting it like ice skating with the uh, roller skating with the walker. Or sometimes the walkers have wheels and they're skating. A walker wasn't designed for that. A walker was designed to be picked up, placed, and then stepped into. Picked up, placed, and then stepped into. Sorry, but, uh, sorry about the sound. Uh, so anyway, those are a couple of things that uh, I saw a lot of times in home health uh, that really contributed to falls. So lighting, giving yourself a moment on the side of the bed before you abruptly stand up and using assistive devices correctly. And if you have an assistive device and you insist on not using it, at least get it out of the way of your path because how many times have I seen a senior fall over their assistive device that is designed to help them not fall? So that's a couple things about falls. It is probably the number one, that and medication management, uh, the number one uh, safety risk issue about staying at home. Uh, throw rugs, as Carrie mentioned, is huge. People don't want to give up their decor. They like their rug. They've had it there forever. Not just throw rugs, but area rugs, particularly with a thick pile or uh, uh, fray, decorative fray that can get caught. Uh, those are things that should be considered to be swapped out. You want a smooth, non-bumpy uh, surface that won't trip you up. And the other thing is proper footwear. Uh, my family, uh, I was a caregiver for a loved one uh, and she happened to love those little ballerina type slippers because they were light and she could have r roller skated in those across her wood floor. So huge slipping, walking around in stocking feet, not good. If anybody's ever been in a hospital or rehab, you know they have those socks with the grips on the bottom. Very important. Stocking feet, not good. Bare feet, not good. Um, so it's very important that people wear proper footwear. And there is cute ladies, there's cute proper footwear out there anymore. Uh, footwear is becoming uh, very popular, proper footwear, and they're designing it so they're not ugly. Um, so it's really, really important uh, that you consider those things. Fall, if I could say anything about staying at home safely, that would be it, would, uh, related to falls. I'm very well. I had my hip replaced four years ago, so proper shoes are definitely in the top of my list. But one thing I did want to share is as we age, our bones become brittle. And the density in our bones, just each day, little by little. And for me, I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes when I go you know, down or go up, I crack and creak. But that's just, you know, so rugs in the home. And I want to share a story, a short story. I do yoga a lot. And I have a very good friend, Donna, who takes yoga with me. And she had some plush carpet still in her, she just moved to the area, still in her apartment. And she actually tripped over the corner of it because there was nothing there to hold it in place. 
and she broke her shoulder in three places. And so she had not only go to the hospital, not only have surgery, not only have to adjust being at home, she missed out on six weeks of yoga. A little bit of prevention. The skids, they make them now. They're even pretty, they're attractive. They make the rugs that um, will help you get out of the shower safely is the main place to have a nice non-skid rug. I actually don't even keep mine down except when I'm taking a shower. And I just wanted to share that with you. The next area, remember there was four areas. We already talked about the first one. This is medication errors. And um, this says that six to 12% of all senior hospital stays are a result of that. Uh, so uh, they say most commonly that cause admission are anticoagulants or blood thinners. And so uh, I remember this studying this, and I learned a word years ago called polypharmacy. And it means that, um, you know, the doctor says, well, we need to give you this because of one thing. But if the doctor doesn't know that you're on this other thing because you got that from your maybe your heart doctor or somebody else, you know, that's why it's so important to have your pharmacy in one place, right? Because the pharmacist knows like, well, if you're taking this and this, you need to be alert to these things that happen because, you know, they, have, they give you like those five sheets of paper every time you pick up a, a prescription and it tells you all the side effects. Well, that's the side effects from that one alone, right? Not when you put it together with whatever else you're taking. And you really need the help of a, of a good pharmacist to help and particularly make sure your doctor knows everything. And that's why most of the time when you go to the doctor, isn't that like one of the first things they do as they're checking you in? We have you taking this, this, this. Is there anything else you're taking about we need to know about? So it, it, what she says is consider having your medications prepackaged by the uh, pharmacy. It's usually delivered biweekly and can prevent the need for refills or running out of medications, a very big help when it comes, well, there she uses the word, polypharmacy, as all meds must be verified with prescribing MD before being added to the pack. So it makes sense, uh, I think, in a lot of ways to be careful about that, um, because I guess some of the things that you guys are talking about really have to, do you want to add to this one, somebody? Uh, polypharmacy is actually defined as four or more medications that someone's taking. And back when I was running... Um uh, Gentiva Home Health back in the day, uh, the average medications that our home health patients were on were 12. That's average. 12 prescription drugs a day. That's average. That means some were taking 5, some were taking 18. <laughs> um, that is some of their medication regimens that I saw on the patients were full-time jobs. Just to dole it out and just to take it. So uh, that takes a lot of time, and the chances for error are really, really huge. So that the first thing that I would recommend for seniors is that seniors have uh, their medications checked by a pharmacist. Most pharmacists are very, very willing to provide a free check of interactions. So you tell the pharmacist what you're on, or better yet, bring them there, and they can run an uh, interaction check on all of these. Um, they will tell you if you, they will be able to tell you if you're taking duplicate medications, because a lot of people have their primary doctor and then you have a specialist. Uh, Sometimes I've seen people on the same exact medication prescribed by two different doctors with two different names because there's the generic name, and then there, for instance, uh, uh, I've never seen it with Coumadin, but Coumadin, uh, Tracy mentions anticoagulants. Coumadin is the brand name for warfarin. Um, that's regulated usually by one doctor, so I've never seen two of those. But I have seen a couple of different blood pressure pills that act the same in the body, and it doesn't mean you can't be on more than one blood pressure pill, because sometimes blood pressure pills... Uh, one will work one way in the body and another one. So some people do need to be on more than one medication for the same diagnoses because they work in different ways. But I have seen people on the same exact medication. One's uh, generic, one is um, uh, the, the name brand. Or people stop taking their medication, they save them in case they need them because they're so expensive, and they put themselves back on something that their doctor has no idea they started taking again. So there are interactions. Um, you know, they say prevention is worth a pound of cure, and that's for sure. 
uh, the truth. I'm not telling. I'm here to tell you: take your medication as prescribed. Make sure all of your doctors know every prescription and over-the-counter and herbal supplement that you're on, and a pharmacist will look at all of that for free. Where you can, where you're able, talk with your doctor about decreasing and coming off some medications. Uh, people tend to, the people that are on the least amount of medications tend to fare better because we're, we're just so... Uh, you know, I had a, a doctor a friend of mine years ago when I was in home health, and I said, you know, not you personally, but you doctors, you know, somebody comes to you and, and you prescribe, 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 prescribe. I mean, we got to get folks off of this many medications. When you need it, you need it for sure. But how many medications are out there? And then you get side effects, and then there's a pill for the side effect. And so he said to me, he said, Nancy, let me tell you something. He said, when a patient comes to see us doctors... They're expecting a, to leave with the prescription. Some of them insist on it. I, I feel this, or I, I, I feel this sort of way. They want a prescription. And I said, well, we need to do a better education of the public then to let them know. So there's medications certainly that we don't need. You see them advertised on TV. If you need them, you need them. There's certain medications that people depend on to live healthy and well. But there's certain medications out there that are just not necessary. So my best advice to you would be to have your pharmacist review all your prescription medications that you take. And if you're taking an old one that's not currently prescribed, include that. All your prescription, all your over-the-counters, and all your herbal supplements and vitamins, because those can have interactions. Have the pharmacist review, and then talk with your doctor or doctors. Make sure they all know what you're putting in your body, and see if you can reduce the number of medications you're on. And see if there are, uh, perhaps, uh, they say food, food can be poison or food can be medicine, depending on what we're putting in our bodies. See if there's not an alternative uh, non-prescription way that you can um, that that you can put into your body to regulate things. Diabetes uh, certainly, you know, diabetics need insulin for sure or an oral medication. But there are people that are not insulin dependent diabetics that have reversed that with weight loss, blood pressure control, that kind of thing. So. Uh, talk to your doctor first. Certainly don't, uh, don't go online and look up how I got off my medications all on my own. It's dangerous, but certainly have a physician and a pharmacist review everything that you're putting into your mouth. I would actually want to just add, advocate for yourself. It's your decision to know the knowledge about your medicines. They're going to help you. You need them. Nobody's going to look at you badly if you take 15 or whatever you take. Just you're the one that needs to know about them. How do they affect you? Yes, your doctor is very important. And I would have to add that I am all over this, having your, your meds taken to your pharmacy and have them verified and prescribed and add to a pack so you can't get it wrong. My father, when he was living, I cared for him for eight years. And in our, we had one cabinet that was nothing but medicine. And it was very difficult. He wanted to do it himself. And it was very difficult to, I kind of had to go behind him and not really be noticed that, yes, he took this, yes, he took that, until I finally said, it's up to me to know about these medicines and does he really need them? And let's go to his doctor and let's find out if, there, if we could maybe get rid of a couple. So knowledge is power. Uh, interestingly, uh, this one is kind of an interesting statistic that Tracy Graff from Abbott Home Care is giving us. National Fire Incident Reporting Agency showed that people over 65 are two and a half more times likely to die in a fire and over 85, it's four times more likely. So a few things that um, she talks about, uh, maybe to help us in this area, um, this is, I guess we're down into kind of general home security, uh, keeping all doors and windows locked, including the garage. Uh, consider a medical alert system. We talked about that. An easy to install bidet toilet seat can maintain independence with personal care and hygiene. Never share personal information over the phone or internet. It's a whole variety of topics, but one of the things that we have to be aware of when we're aging at home is the fact that 
uh, we don't really have a gatekeeper. Somebody comes to the front door, somebody calls us on the telephone. We are the front line of taking care of ourselves. And we've done some things over the years with uh, our state attorney, Phil Archer. He's a real serious uh, uh, force in trying to fight uh, the fight the things that come up with senior scams and things like that. He publishes a newsletter every single month about you know what they're seeing from the state attorney's office about what these jokers are up to. And so it's important to stay on top of that. Um, yeah, Marie. This is Marie Woodell. Her company is Clutter Be Gone. One of the things I found out, I had two clients this happened to, if you are not sure, reach out to somebody, reach out to an expert, ask them, never give anyone any credit cards, no money, don't go out and buy gift cards. If somebody says, whatever, I'll get back to you. Call them, call me, call somebody, and say, this is the, this is the call I got. Everybody has computer problems. You're not the only one, okay? If anybody calls you out of the blue and tells you you have computer problems, it's a scam, hang up. You do not need to be polite to them, just hang up. Block that phone number on your phone. This woman, smart woman, a banker, that was her career, ended up, long story short, $8,000 in gift cards. She had to read the numbers to this person on the phone, okay? Ask for help before you give anybody a dollar. Simple as that. We're all here to help you. Staying in your own, own home until the end of your life is achievable with an aging plan if you can do it safely. Can you, you guys kind of give you a minute to tie a bow around everything we've been talking about? <laughs> sure. We kind of skipped a little bit over fire danger, um, but I, I, Tracy is very right in her slide presentation as far as seniors being more likely to die in a fire. So what's important? Smoke detectors. We've all heard that. Uh, how, how many, this is rhetorical, don't answer. How many of you have undone the battery because you get that tweeting noise and you can't stand it? <laughs> better, better get the tweet, better the tweeting noise. Don't, don't take your batteries out. And they recommend that you check your uh, smoke detectors at the, when the, the clocks change. So that's twice a year, and that's what's recommended. So daylight savings time, and then when we go back, uh, that's a good time to check them. We don't want you on a ladder. We don't want you on a ladder. There are, uh, there are fire departments that will come out and uh, check your smoke detectors. There's also handymen. I have, we have those resources at Helping Seniors, those honest companies that won't rip you off, that um, will charge you a fair price to do those kind of things. So uh, very important. And then the other thing to consider is a clear path out of your home should there be a fire, uh, a clear path out of your home. Um, so clutter, getting back to clutter, making sure that exits, that you have at least a couple of exits in your home. Maria, back to, to your point, there are all sorts of scams out there. Uh, there are scams uh, about uh, gift cards. Uh, one of the most famous ones now is people calling people and saying, your, and they have a little bit of info, your grandson is in jail and I can get them out, but I need you to forward me the money. And people have been ripped off that way. You name it, um, you name it, uh, there's, there's a scam for it. Um, I guess um, the bow on the package of aging safely at home, yes, it is possible to age in your home. Um, people are living very far beyond uh, the age of 65. So it's important to consider things like adapting your home. For instance, when you get there, and most of us will if we live long enough, how will I get into my shower tub? How will I step over that? Uh, and then if you slip, God forbid, that is, that's quite the injury, including a head injury. So uh, considering home adaptation, things like, and there are companies out there that will convert a tub shower to a, a zero thre threshold shower. Um, so that's important. Are your doorways in your home large enough to accommodate a wheelchair, if you need one, or a walker? Um, Non-slip services. Uh, so if you have flooring or rugs, making sure you don't have tripping hazards. All of these things are important. And then things to consider, there's a thing called activities of daily living. That's what we call it in, uh, in, the, in medical terms. Um, activities of daily living, what are they? Those are the things we do every day that we take for granted. Cooking, preparing a, uh, something to reheat in the microwave. 
uh, getting, well, I'll start in the morning. We get up, we go to the bathroom, we brush our teeth. Uh, we may take a full shower or we may just, uh, you know, we put on our makeup if we're ladies. Uh, we, uh, men, you, you may have to shave every day or every so often. Um, so we get ourselves ready. Then we get ourselves dressed. And then we have to make ourselves breakfast and then lunch and then dinner. Okay? The food has to come from somewhere. So you have to go out and get the food or have the food delivered. Uh, then you have laundry you got to do. Um, then you have that pesky uh, uh, smoke detector that's beeping. How do you get up there and change the battery? All of these things that we take for granted when we're younger and when we're able, or even older and able, we have to think about who will take care of that if I can't do that. Sometimes that means bringing in outside help, whether it's a private duty home health agency, whether it's Clutter Be Gone with Maria, um, it takes a village, just as Carrie said, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village uh, to uh, help our, our seniors uh, and all of us. We, we need each other. So start thinking about all of these things and how you would do the things you do now maybe easily. If you plan to stay at home, think about functionality of it and also the finances of it. Can you afford it? And I guess what I could say the most and I wrote an article on this, if I could say anything, is that we humans are meant to be social creatures. And I've had family members, too, that they're loners. They like hanging out. And they're perfectly fine. They're not lonely. They like hanging out by themselves. They don't like crowds. They're not that social. We need each other. Maybe you're not the social butterfly, but it pays to know people. So stay involved, whether that's your church or religious organization, whether it's a senior center, whether it's neighbors or friends. Stay connected to people because people who know people are the people that get help. So stay connected to people. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.